Hi there, Will here. And today, a new chapter. For haircuts, at least. Anyway, I've got some things I'd like to show you. Some uh, photographs that I made in the past week, and some things that I've bought, because they showed up for a ridiculously good price, and will hopefully be immensely useful. I don't think I've ever actually opened a box on camera on this channel, so uh, this is probably going to be like my first uh, proper unboxing, ironically. I've videoed myself opening a bunch of boxes, but uh, I've never actually included in anything because it's a bit boring having me voice over watching a box being opened. Whereas today, we're opening the box in the moment. What do you reckon's in there? It's a Nikonos 4A. It looks uh, somewhat dodgier than the listing made it seem, <laughs> but I guess if it turns on, then everything will be fine. It's uh, very dusty. Anyway, and also a photographic vest, which hopefully is slightly less dusty than the Nikonos. Ooh, this thing is fancy. How does it work? I don't know. But what happened was I bought the Nikonos from the guy and then he said he had a, a photographic vest and I said, oh, can't pass up an offer on a photographic vest, Mr. William. And uh, here we are. This thing looks very high tech. There's a lot of buckles and stuff going on here. My goal with it was kind of to have a photographic vest that I could use for assisting so that I wouldn't have to keep packing and unpacking my normal camera bag. And uh, if I can fit all my assisting things on it, then it'll have been a worthy purchase. Otherwise, not really a waste of, I think it was like $20, so. Going back to the Nikonos, I decided to give it a wipe down with a cloth just because the dust was like quite messy. And in that brief moment of uh, overview, <laughs> I noticed that this camera is actually missing a locking nugget on the uh, opening mechanism and the flash sync port cap, which is quite important. I mean, you can shove Prestic in there and uh, get away with it, but like, I'd like to have the cap. So I messaged the person who sold it to me and they said, oops, must have forgot to send it. I'll look in a box. And that's where we are right now. Not particularly hopeful that they'll find it, but uh, besides that, the camera actually functions perfectly. Like the shutter speeds seem accurate, it meters automatically. The difference between the Nikonos 5 and this Nikonos 4A is that uh, the 4A is pretty much a Nikonos 5 without manual settings and uh, the locking mechanism has changed. I'm quite bummed though, because like it was cheap. I mean, it wasn't super expensive, but also it was it wasn't so cheap that it was worth parts, you know? It was, it was a decent price for a working camera and the guy listed it as fully functional in perfect working condition. And uh, I suppose my mistake, I took his word for it. So <laughs> I guess practice what you preach and next time I'll be more careful. It's still gonna work though. Like I'll still be able to use it to take pictures. And uh, I didn't even really buy it to take pictures. I bought it because I've got like one of each of them now, except the original Nikonos. So I have the full set. It's the only camera I ever want to have the full set of is these Nikonoses. To be honest though, the most exciting thing I've bought recently, which uh, I also got for less than it's worth, is uh, this Saunders easel with uh, <laughs> all axis adjustment. Ooh. You're not meant to adjust this with it uh, sitting down, by the way, otherwise it scratches the base. But you could, it's a darkroom easel that you can adjust all the sides of so that you can crop it to be exactly how you want things to be, which is uh, really quite a luxury around here because every other easel I've ever bought has only got two of these blades for you to adjust and you have very limited options in terms of the border that you want to make. So having one of these is immensely exciting. And on the vest note, I'm going to keep it real with you. This thing feels a lot more tactical than tactical right now. Probably mainly as a result of my haircut because this combination makes it look like I'm going for some uh, pseudo military Gore-Tex fashion vibe, uh, which I'm definitely not. <laughs> and also because I don't have these uh, slip lock pockets they're called that go with the low pro vests that function as pockets. This thing has pockets inside, which is where the film should be. But this looks much cooler <laughs> with the, the film all around it like some sort of uh, ammo system. And this is definitely not how this would be worn either. Or this. I'm just playing around here, okay? Giving you examples of uh, potential features. I don't think uh, you're ever likely to see me wearing it in a video, but 
I'm not unhappy with my purchase, I'm quite stoked. I like specific use things, you know, like wetsuits. Wetsuits are for diving and it's a uniform and you feel like you're wearing a uniform. This is a photographer's vest, technically, and uh, when you wear it, you feel like a photographer. Anyways, that's about it uh, on the gear front, the new gear front. There's a couple other things that I'm waiting on to arrive and uh, might talk about them when they get here, but uh, I'm quite happy overall. The vest seems functional, the easel is exceptional, the camera, I'll get to work. And I mean, all of this stuff was about a tenth what it's worth to buy, so not exactly the biggest loss in the world. Anyway, outside of that, I made some photos this week. I didn't take that much video while making them, but there are some really nice ones, and uh, here they are. this whole uh, hair thing is seeming slightly uh, devoid of context. In last week's video I mentioned I was going to cut it and uh, donate it to cancer and uh, thus I am doing so. I've got uh, <laughs> my hair <laughs> in a plastic bag here which feels slightly ridiculous because uh, I kind of feel like I'm carrying my own pelt <laughs> but anyway and it's gonna get donated to cancer and hopefully be turned uh, into a wig for someone who needs it. With regards to the photos, the ones in the outdoors I just made on uh, some brief excursions, nothing big. I really like the one of the lifeguard seat though, for some reason. They're all on Kodak Gold, the outdoor ones as well. And then the studio portraits, studio portraits, I uh, made to document the hair for what it was because I'm not sure I'll ever grow it out that long again. I messed up the first two, like the one that you saw in the intro, because I adjusted the settings on the lens absentmindedly, sort of from the side and looked at the wrong thing and put completely the wrong settings in, which is my fault. And then once I realized my mistake, once I looked at the lens, I uh, miss pre-focused it. So the 251s aren't in focus at all for some reason with when they do have the right exposure, which is unfortunate. But I got some nice ones with uh, the 90 mil, and now have documentation of what my hair once was. Anyway, for those of you who uh, celebrate Easter, I think Easter weekend is coming, so uh, I hope you have a lovely Easter, and uh, I hope everyone else who might not celebrate Easter also has a lovely weekend. And besides that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.